having said all that by way of introduction, then let me uh, introduce the first speaker, who is uh, Yu Kun Shi, who's going to talk about um, marine diversity dynamics, I would say, of the Casamovian. Yu Kun, please. Yes, thank you, Spencer. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, okay, good morning, afternoon, and evening, guys. It's a great pleasure to be in this online international workshop in such a special time. Uh, I think I'm quite a new face to the Casimovian community. So I would like to say a few words about myself, firstly. Uh, my name is Yu Kun Shi and I work at Nanjing University, China. Uh, I study physiolinics as taxonomist, but mainly in Perman. Uh, quantitative stratigraphy and uh, paleobiology is my recent focus. Uh, and in the past year, and also this year, we discovered this very interesting bio event. And here, would like to share this information with you. Uh, my talk is about a major loss of the marine invertebrate and the conodot diversity in the Casimovian. Uh, I know conodot has always been put in the, in the analysis within uh, invertebrates. So here I use this special combination of invertebrate and conodot. Uh, if you have more proper term, please uh, must let me know. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, we all know now that the, there is a distinct terrestrial bio event in the Casimovian age. It's what we know as the uh, carnivorous rainforest collapse or Casimovian rainforest collapse. It is marked by the replacement of the humid tropical rainforests by the seasonally dry perming biomes in Europe and North America and regarded as one of the two mass extinctions in the plant fossil record. In the meantime, the terrestrial tetrapod diversification was also triggered by the change in environment. All these in phenomena are partially believed to be connected with the short-term but intense glacial phase in the Pennsylvania. If that is the reason, it must change the marine environment too. So we wonder what happened in the sea during that time. Next slide, please. Uh, I think uh, Xiangdong already cited this uh, figure uh, in his talk. Uh, this figure is from Fan uh, et al. 2020 paper. Uh, here we got a very high resolution Paleozoic marine invertebrate and conodot biodiversification, a uh, biodiversity curve, which you could say in the current figure. The top is the species and the genus number change, and the lower part is the species change of the different taxon groups. In all these curves, in both of this, these curves, a diversity increase pattern from early carnivorous to early perming has been recognized. We temporarily named it as carnivorous perming biodiversification event, CPBE. And in the figure, I marked it with the light blue shadow and numbered as five, you can see. It's quite a distinct rising pattern in both the species and the genus level. And we could say it started from the time about Mesium and increased quickly to the climax in a selling of Permian. Uh, Spencer has mentioned the time of the sluggish uh, evolution in the, the Stanley and Powell suggested, but here we can see it's totally different. Uh, but during the, that time, uh, a huge diversity loss actually punctuated this increase and that happened in Casimovian, if I could say. Because the time resolution of this curve is really high, averagely 26,000 uh, years, and uh, especially in Casimovian, it's uh, 12,500 years. So a fine scale study could be further carried on. Next, please. 
uh, let's look at take a look at the data firstly. The data set of this analysis is from Chinese sections, but the sections are distributed all over the major Chinese tectonic uh, tectonic plates, including North China, South China, terrain, uh, tectonic blocks in Tibet and the Simari continent, as well as parts of the Indochina and the Kazakhstan plates. During the Carboniferous, these plates were situated across a wide range of paleo latitudes, stretching from southern Paragonwana to northern Bori regions. So therefore, the current biodiversity uh, pattern represents the biodiversity change of a wide latitude, temperature, and climate coverage of the paleo area, especially eastern, uh, eastern Turthis. Yes. Next, please. Uh, altogether, there are uh, 3,112 sections, uh, 11,268 species, and about uh, 260,000 fossil records were gathered for this calculation. Uh, the method called constraint opti optimization initialed as CONUP was used to do the 3D graphic correlation. Before the calculation, the synonyms of the species have been combined, and the species with open uh, nomenclature have been ex excluded. Also, because of the huge amount of data, a parallel program of CONOP was set up on the supercomputer called Tianhe Second in China for the calculation. Then we got the high resolution diversity curve. Next. Please. Uh, before, uh, can you go back to the, yes, uh, go back. Uh, back. Uh, next, yes. Uh, I have shown this curve before. Uh, there, the CPBE diversification curves could be enlarged to get more details. Uh, next, please. Yes. So here is the enlarged curve, including the CPBE duration. The upper uh, black curve is the species number change of the whole fauna. We have divided this duration into six subintervals, and we can see the number here. And the CPBE contains I2 to I5, four stages describing this diversification event. Um, I2 is a slow increase interval with conodots, corals, and brachypods were all important components. I3 is a quick increase interval along with the rising of foraminifera. I4 displays the big loss around the Kasimovin and I5 is the rapidest rising interval. I4 then could be again enlarged to observe the Kasimovin loss. Next slide, please. Yes, in this figure, we could see more details. The time duration, the whole time duration is from uh, 310 to 299 MA. I marked the I4 with dark gray shadow here, and the upper curve is the species change, and we could say the species kept the trend of dropping in the whole I4 interval. And the species lost nearly uh, 19%. In I4, the major groups include from Nifra uh, occupying over 50% of the species, brachypods occupying uh, 26%. The important groups also include conodots and then chorus, the occupying uh, about 7% and 6% of the whole species. All these four important groups display the trend of dropping during I4. And if I dare to put the beginning of Kasimovin to 307 MA as, most re as the most recent GTS does, this drop started before, a bit before that. Uh, next, please. About this drop, 
another two data named species origination rate and extinction rate could offer more clues. They were acquired by counting the first and the last occurrence record of the species in a certain time interval. And for this analysis, we used two million years as a time interval. In I4, the mean origination rate is 16, around 16% 16 per million year. And the mean extinction rate is about 26%. The read curves are also plotted in the lower space of this, this the current figure, so we can see the ch their changes during the I-4. The peak of the extinction rate occurred around uh, 305 million years, a million years ago, and then it started to drop, but the origination rate started to rise quickly. About the end of Casimovin, the origination rate outnumbered the extinction rate. So the species number of the whole fauna stopped uh, dropping. But all these diversity changes were calculated from Chinese data. We will wonder how the change will be on a global scale. Next slide, please. Um, the work of Oroy in uh, 2008 is a kind of famous analysis on a global scale, um, but I think their data is a bit out of date. So I ran a quick and but rough calculation using the up-to-date uh, data from paleobiology database. I downloaded all the fossil uh, records from VCN to gazelling age there and selected the marine invertebrates and uh, uh, conodus records from it. The, all the uncertain species have been excluded. And finally, altogether, I got uh, 16,917 um, records belonging to 3, uh, 1,310 genera, 3,669 uh, species. Uh, I want to, the calculation to be consistent with the CONOP concept. So the species range were uh, all combined for calculation. Uh, next slide, please. So now we can see the result. Because the PBDB data only recorded in either stage or substage, uh, we could only get the diversity in state, stage scale. But we can see the trend similar to the previous uh, result. Both the species and the genus number increased from Vincien to Muscovin and then dropped in the Casimovin age. And this increased trend is also close to the Chinese data set slowly rising from Vincent to subhalving, then turn to a faster mode. But uh, I have to mention that because of the time for this calculation is really limited. So I didn't have time to count the records of these species, which I should do. So no uh, refaction or bootstrapping analysis has been taken to correct the sampling effect. Uh, next, please. I also plotted the important groups of this data set here. And we could say they include gastropods, uh, cephalopods, brachypods, and uh, other three. Uh, the gastropods is the most uh, abundant. It occupy, uh, they occupy, uh, occupy uh, 26% of the total species. And brachypods uh, occupy 20%. Foraminifera and the cephalopods each has around 10% species of the, of the fauna. The total species loss of Casimovin is uh, 29, around 29, uh, nearly uh, 30%, which is higher than the 80% uh, loss from the Chinese data set. Uh, if we look at the groups, the cephalopods displayed the biggest drop and it's a kind of two-step drop, first in Moscovy and second in Kasimovy. Gastropods, brachypods, from nephro and uh, arthropods all displayed a small drop, but the chorus increased a bit. 
it's different from others. Um, I marked the Chinese data set number statistics here uh, within the, uh, with the right number, and we can see the uh, great difference between them. Uh, they probably could come from the paleo by geographic variation or simple like calculation methods. Uh, next, please. Uh, the data sets of these two analyses cover totally different area. We have seen the Chinese data is mainly distributed in the Eastern Churches. The PBDB data all have paleo latitudes and longitudes. So I projected them into a J plates map of 310 MA, and they are truly on a global scale. We can see in the right figure that they covered the vast area in Turkey and Pangaea. Uh, we, uh, you may wonder why there are dots projected in the middle of the Turkey's ocean. Um, I checked that they have the they probably have the wrong paleo latitudes or longitudes. By all means, uh, a rough result could be clear that there is a significant diversity loss around Kasimovin in Turkey and also globally. The loss might occur before Kasimovin resulted from the high species, uh, yeah, high species extinction rate and low origination rate. Since there are distinctions between the Chinese block data and the global data, the marine the invertebrate and conodont composition as well as their loss should be different among areas. Next slide, please. Of course, we should can we were concerned what's the reason for this diversity drop. In my previous analysis, I combined the non-biological uh, changes to look for a factor. If we only focused on the I-4 interval, we could find the high frequency atmospheric CO2 change in the large glacial area in Gangwana. But did they lead to the marine diversity loss? Mm, I'm not sure. I think we need a high resolution marine diversity uh, curve on a global scale to confirm the loss firstly, then probably get more high resolution environmental indices to confirm that, to compare with that. Next slide, please. Uh, last, but probably most important, which is also triggered by the talks uh, in this workshop on the first day, I have to emphasize that our high resolution time scale is really depends on the GTS. So, um, I can say the diversity loss is solid, it's real, it's there. The diversity pattern is solid, but the, all the timing and rates around Kasimovin could possibly be all altered if the Kasimovin definition is different in the future. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the result of Kasimovin GSSP and the definition. Thanks, uh, next please. Um, I'm looking, also looking forward to your questions, comments, and uh, suggestions. Thanks. All right, thank you, Yukun. Very, very interesting talk. Um, are there any questions? There are none in the chat, so I'll, I'll, I'll break the ice. Um, a few years ago, uh, a European colleague pointed out to me that if you look at the PBDB, the Paleobiology Database, which was compiled by Americans, that it's very weak on Russian data, probably because the Americans who did it couldn't read Russian. It must be very weak with Chinese data as well. Could you, because you know, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of the PBDB. I see it as a very coarse and like you say, out of date, and some of you know, Don Prothero wrote a very good paper a few years ago where he looked at fossil rhinoceroses, which is his group in the PBDB. And other people have done this and you find a lot of taxonomic mistakes. You found paleo latitude errors. Anyway, how does the PBDB capture Chinese diversity data? Uh, not really good. When I look at the Carboniferous uh, data, I only found uh, uh, probably several books uh, recorded in the PBDB. 
and uh, I and I and I definitely know the Chinese data really uh, should be a huge amount about company first. Uh, but for the global data, uh, uh, if if we should if we want to use global data, this uh, only uh, uh, database now existed to have more of that. But the thing is, um, for the PPDB data, we cannot really have um, more um, specific um, process uh, analysis. That's the big limitation. Uh, that's why we uh, we are actually constructing or already had a, uh, a, a global, also a global uh, data uh, database. To, and we uh, we kind of input all the uh, second sections into the database, then we could have the the most detailed information about all those uh, all those sections. And now the the data now the database uh, is have uh, the most uh, abundant Chinese sections, of course. But uh, uh, nowadays we are actually uh, inputting uh, the data set around the the world. So in the future, we could have the chance to do a more process and um, uh, based on the section uh, 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 analysis on the, uh, on the global scale data. Good, thank you. Um, I see Olivia King has a question. Olivia, can you turn on your audio and video, please? Hello. Thank you. Hello. Um, it's an immense amount of work, but I just had a quick question about if this is looking at the overall marine, have you separated out for uh, shallow marine versus deep marine species or any type of interpretation like that? No, um, uh, you mean the, the okay, uh, for the uh, for the first analysis, uh, we use the Chinese data. Uh, we didn't really, uh, this is kind of first stage of, about this analysis. We're going to do more analysis uh, according to this data, based on this data set uh, further. And uh, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the current going on analysis, we're going to divide all this data um, into the more uh, paleoecologic background. But for the, the second, the PBDB calculation, I, I just did a kind of a rough calculation to compare with the Chinese data. So I think I will not use that for, the, for further research. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, and uh, Ron, Mar Ron Martino has a question. Ron, do you want to turn on your mic and video? Sure. Um, I just wondered, uh, you, you've shown this uh, decrease during the Casimovian. Uh, what are your impressions as to what ecologic factors change during the Casimovian to, to drive these changes in, in origination and extinction? Uh, was it temperature? What, were we talking uh, about anoxia? Uh, are, are there more severe regressions that reduce shelf area? What, what, what are your ideas on this? I have no idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I just uh, just uh, take a look at the the um, the kind of geochemical uh, or physical factors I could find, and I uh, I, I found it's interesting to say the CO two uh, level is really uh, fluctuated at that time, uh, compared to I, I should say the, in my actually in my figure we can see the whole. Uh, change from uh, BCN, the, the end of Devonia to the early Permian. And uh, that time in the Casimovian stage age is actually a, a kind of most fluctuated change for the, that most quickly change for the uh, CO2. So I kind of think that's a, that's a thing to change the, the marine environment, but I'm not really sure about that. Okay, and Jörg Schneider has a question. Jörg, turn on your audio, please. Thank you, you could great research. Uh, because of your exceptional data sets, have you checked latitudinal effects from high to low latitudes and uh, diversity changes? Yeah. Uh, for the Chinese data set, because we only have a 
kind of we, we, we could cover the data set could cover uh, the the wide range of data uh, the, the latitudes but the thing is if we divided that it will only have probably uh, we don't think it, it will have enough data for each latitude mm -hmm. but right now we are composing the global data into the analysis we, we're going to do a global analysis in the future and uh, with that we sure we could do the latitude uh, analysis on the on the global data it will uh, i think it will have a, a more significant um, application or, or explanation yeah thank you this this might help us to understand the causes yes thank you i could yeah <laughs> All right, and uh, and Bill DeMichael has a question. Bill, hi Spencer. First, I wanted to say that was that was just a great talk. Th thank you very much. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, I was wondering if we could get a perspective from uh, Herman or Cortland or Phil Heckel, all of whom have looked at what happens on the land before down in the Demoisian, uh, you know, the base of the Casimovian or what will be Mo late Muscovian. Just to, to see if we're also getting a, a, a comparable timing. That's, that's very interesting that it starts earlier. And I wonder what these guys have done in more stratigraphic work, uh, if they might have anything to say about that. One of them? Or yeah, one? Um, this is Cortland here. Um, Bill, um, yeah, uh, I, th I think what Bill is saying is, is intriguing and, and, and correct. Uh, as I'll be <laughs> showing, um, what, what, when we get to the latter part of what we consider to be the Balsovian in both the Illinois and Appalachian Basin, we start to see things go. I mean, it, that happens throughout the entire section, which is why we can use polynomial biostratigraphy. But it starts to become especially apparent. And it, what happens is that the intervals of extinction events tighten up. And so what I mean by that is that the, just the, the amount of strata between each level of extinction starts to get smaller and smaller. Um, and then the, with the Muscovian Casimovian boundary extinction, that, that's the big one because we lose all of our lycopod trees with the exception of sigillaria. And you know, those were the things that were our, our good friends and usually the dominant forms in you know Langsetian, Dethmanian coals, which are usually seventy-five to eighty percent Lycospora, uh, but we, we do see a, a number of things beginning to happen earlier than the Moscovian Casimovian boundary. Um, anybody want to make a point about that, Herman? Yes, please. Actually, in the mega flora, you see a strong drop but it's due to the facies and the preservation. I'm not sure that it is a real drop in diversity, except the one that Cortland just mentioned. And uh, that is made up in part by the increase in diversity in tree ferns, which is also dramatic at that time. So in other words, one group falls out largely, another group becomes more diverse. The, uh, but the facies changes cover this up in part so that it's difficult to say if this really happens with plant macrofossils. Bill, you're muted, Bill. Yeah, I just wanna make one last comment about, uh, about this. Um, some of the comment here shows the confusion of where these boundaries are that uh, you couldn't refer to um, because uh, the, the big turnover in North America is the Des Moinesian Missourian boundary, which isn't exactly the Moscovian Casimovian boundary. And, uh, the, and then, of course, the recent movement of where, at least in North America, we thought the Stephanian Westphalian boundary was compared to Europe just throws tremendous nomenclatural problems. I mean, I've seen people uh, writing from, uh, it was an insect guy I was writing in Britain, say there's no change at the Westphalian-Stephanian boundary. Well, 
the way the Americans were using it, there was an enormous change. But the way it was being used once you put the Cantabrian in and shove the Stephanian Westphalian boundary down, all of a sudden there isn't any change. So it, it becomes hard to even use the literature unless you know what literature you're talking about. So you could, I think what you were saying about that a lot depends on where these boundaries end up, whether we can even talk to each other because of the, of, of the way the boundaries are floating around and they aren't linked up together. It just makes communication really difficult. You almost right. have to go back to using your regional stages. Good, good point. Um, and we, we need to move on, but I think we should all put pressure on Shangdong Wang to get a vote next week <laughs> on the base of the Casimovians. So we can, I mean, really in, in the, what people call the Hedbergian stratigraphy, we need one time scale, one global time scale at some level so we can all speak the same language.